When I got started woodworking, I was broke and, and also very impressionable. I fell victim to literally every single list on the internet that said you needed these tools. Before we jump into the first tool that I don't think beginners should be wasting their money on initially, I want to preface that we're gonna be talking about money and we're gonna be talking about utility of all the tools that I'm bringing up on this list. Reason being is that I don't want you wasting money and I want you getting the most bang for your buck in the tools that you're actually purchasing. So I put together a list of my top five with also a couple little bonuses in there. So let's get into it. First and foremost, the number one tool that I don't think you need to buy as a beginner is the K-Body Parallel Clamp. If you're not familiar, that's what this is called. It's a parallel clamp. And the intent here is to give you more uniform glue ups whenever you're creating panels, and whenever you're building stuff. Problem is, this sucker right here, the single 24 inch K-Body uh, parallel clamp costs 40 bucks. Not that bad, but you definitely need more than one clamp to glue up a panel. And then you also need clamps to be longer a lot of the time than just 24 inches. To get into a 40 inch clamp, you're looking at $61 and the 50 inch clamp is $65. So this easily could become a very, very expensive type of clamp to have in your shop. What I thought when I was a beginner was that these clamps were gonna make my glue ups way better because they're cooler looking and everybody's using them on YouTube. When in reality, if you go into professional shops, what you're finding much more often are these. This is a pipe clamp. <laughs> pipe clamps are what I got started with and what I used primarily in my beginner woodworking journey. Few reasons for that. One, one of these three quarter inch pipe clamp kits, if you wanna go with the expensive one, this one's by Bessie. Uh, I think they cost you right around $21 for just this clamp. So you're already at half the price. Now, these can be used on three quarter inch black pipe. This piece of 24 inch costs about 15 bucks, but you can literally use as long as a pipe as you can find on these, which is amazing. You can also use couplers on the end of the pipe and thread a bunch of them together to give you really, really long clamps when needed. If you're cheap like me, you can buy the same type of clamp at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks. So you're gonna get into having more clamps at a more affordable price. And then on top of it, I also think they're better for panels. Why, you might ask? Well, in all my experience, I built a lot of big stuff. And unless you have a great joiner planer setup, you're gonna need clamping pressure to help you glue up good panels. And with this type of a handle system that comes on a pipe clamp, you're gonna get a lot more opportunity to put more pressure into your glue up than you are with the handle on the K body or one of these Revo clamps. Now, all the pros and the guys that have super pristine tools that are really high-end are gonna get great glue joints right off of their joints or in their table saw. But I know as a beginner, that's not always the case. And so what I found was once I started investing in these, I was buying them on sale uh, and I was stockpiling them thinking they were gonna make my glue ups better. And they just don't. You can't get a ton of pressure and they're not gonna make your woodworking any better than what you can do with a pipe clamp. So, First tool that I don't think any beginner should invest in early are going to be the parallel clamps. The number two tool that I don't think a beginner should waste their money on is going to be the handheld belt sander. First and foremost, I only know like two woodworkers who are really good that can use a belt sander in a way that doesn't actually make it more difficult than it does easy. The intent here is for large material removal with this tool, but when it comes to value and price, one of these suckers at Home Depot is gonna run you like 160 bucks, which is a lot for a sander. And this isn't that one specifically, but between that and then the lack of utility in the sander, I just think it's a waste of money. When it comes to using the tool, I've ran into uh, gouging material a ton with a belt sander. I've run into uh, running into problems with the band, the band tension. Once it heats up, it kind of expands, it falls off. Always having problems with that. Uh, dust collection on it actually sucks because there's no way for dust to be collected inside of the belt itself. And more or less, like I just really realized that the tool is not what I needed it to be. And for the price, you have much better options out there. So my advice is for 90 bucks, go grab yourself one of these five inch random orbit sanders from one of the box stores. And it is a way, way, way better tool in my opinion. You're gonna get more usage out of it. The pads are much easier to find. You're gonna get a better finish quality as well. You can use this for majority material removal as well as all the way up through your finishing. And if you're looking for something a little more dainty with your finishing, 
for another 70 bucks, which is all in, still cheaper than the belt sander, you can get one of the plate sanders that DeWalt also makes. Um, and both of these, in my opinion, are a better option than a belt sander for a beginner. They're cheaper and they have more utility. Lastly, the newer models actually have the ability to have dust collection hooked up in one way or another, maybe with a little duct tape, maybe with a little 3D printed arm for your vacuum. But all in all, it's way better than what's gonna happen with your belt sander. And in my opinion, just a much better and more valuable tool. Third tool that I don't think any beginner should get into or purchase is gonna be one of these 18 gauge cordless brad nailers. Now bear with me here. This is an incredibly popular DIY tool, and I get it. It is versatile, uh, you could take it pretty much anywhere. If you've got it on a specific battery platform, it can be an awesome tool. But I will say this, I have a better option for you if you are just getting into the craft. And that option is going to be a cordless compressor and an 18 gauge nail gun. Now listen to me, the cordless nail gun itself is gonna run you 250 bucks. They're pretty pricey, and as they should be. You can get them with and without a battery, and I think uh, Rigid and Ryobi are making two of the most popular ones there are. If you're on those battery platforms, you can buy them without, they're probably a little bit cheaper. But with that, it comes the fact that this is a one-trick pony. You can only nail with it, more or less, right? And you can only nail 18-gauge brad nails. So, for 250 bucks, you can do one thing with this tool. For $219, you can get into this compressor, which then opens up the realm of doing a lot more. One of these 18 grade uh, brad nailers from Porter Cable only costs about $90. So you'd be all in at $310, which is 60 bucks more than just this unit here. And you can now shoot your 18 gauge nails, or you could purchase a 23 gauge pin nailer which is anywhere from 100 to $200, depending on the brand. And now you can shoot 23 and 18 gauge. You can even step it up to 16 or 15. You could pretty much use this thing as flexibly as you would use this. Now I will say from a gun to a gun standpoint, you get a much more favorable tip on this. You get better penetration in my experience. This tool is so much lighter uh, and nicer to use than the battery powered ones. These things are heavy. They've got a huge nose on them. They take a ton out of you if you're putting a bunch of nails into something, especially if you're doing like trim or if you're doing an on-site installation. It's just that heft gets to be a huge pain in the butt. And if you're standing on a ladder, it just sucks. You're better off, in my opinion, grabbing the lighter tool um, that you can use in and out of the shop uh, with one of these cordless compressors. Getting into the battery platform, uh, you know, the DeWalt, makes a phenomenal product, I'm a huge fan. I've got a lot of their batteries, so investing in their batteries doesn't really matter as much to me. But I would definitely get into the more utilitarian tool for the shop and out of the shop than I would into one of these big ass SOBs um, that basically only does one thing. I will say this can only shoot one nail at a time. With a compressor, you can get into one of these guns, which has something called bump mode, where you can just bang nails in, which goes super fast depending on the application, as well as way, 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 way more fun to use. <laughs> Lastly, if you need something to say, blow off some of your materials on a job site, the compressor comes in great handy. We've used this little guy to do myriad of things. We have our air-based tools that we'll sometimes use on a job site. If we're in a part of the shop that we don't have air run to, we bust this sucker out. It works awesome. Uh, more or less, we find ourselves grabbing this sucker a lot more than we would a cordless tool like this that can only do one thing. So before we finish the top five, we did have a couple honorable mention tools, starting with this. If you don't know what this is, this is Craig's Circular Saw Track Guide. And I don't even know what this sucker costs anymore, but I bought it thinking it was gonna be just like having a track saw in my shop. And more or less, I've come to the conclusion that any of these gimmicky track saw hookup adjustment things are all junk. Don't buy them. You're better off making a track saw guide like I did in this TikTok video and using that to cut down your sheet goods if you're looking for something that's gonna give you that straight line sort of track saw you cut. Don't waste your money on this junk. The second tool that I don't think a beginner should waste their money on is this sucker. And no, that's not a drill press. This 
is a hollow chisel mortiser. When I started to step up my woodworking game and I wanted to get into doing mortise and tenon joinery, I really thought that this tool would come in handy, but it turns out it's just more of a pain in the butt than it is anything else. It costs a bunch of money. The bits are really uh, hard to keep sharp. It has a lot of like little cues and, and quirks and whatnot to it. And they're great tools if they're a floor model. I really don't like the bench top model. Once you get into any bigger materials, this thing is racking all over the place as you're putting pressure on it and whatnot. You'd have to fix it to a table anyway. If you wanna get into doing mortise and tenon joinery, there's way easier ways with routers, dominoes, or a floor model like this that you can buy used on Craigslist. Do not recommend for the beginner. Third honorable mention tool on my list is gonna be any, and I mean any, cordless palm sander. I've used a bunch of the big brands, including the Festool, which is awesome, but it's still not worth the money. If you're a woodworker and if you're sanding, you're probably gonna be in a shop near a plug, even when you're on site. Unless you're working outdoors in the middle of the woods, I still don't recommend this. You're better off plugging a sander into a generator or something else. These have terrible ergonomics. The dust collection sucks. The power is terrible. I just really don't see the benefit of spending more money to get a cordless tool like this um, in any regards. Sorry to all you brands out there that are investing heavily in it, but you're never gonna be able to beat the plug-in palm sander. So don't waste your money. Number four, bench top spindle belt sander combo, specifically from Rigid. Now I don't know who else makes these, but when I was getting started, they were all over the internet and I thought they were awesome. I thought it was super cool. I really, really wanted one because I have FOMO just like you guys. I want all the cool tools that I see on the internet. But the problem with this sucker is I've broken three or four of them, one, it really just doesn't get used enough. It literally sits on the bench and collects dust. As you can see, this sucker is just dusty as hell. And it's just not that necessary to spend your money on when you're getting started. You can get accessories for other tools in your shop like your drill press or your handheld drill to do curves way easier. They make handheld sanders that do this kind of stuff. You just don't need it and it's super pricey. Last time I checked the price, I was too dumb to write it down, so I'll put it up on the screen right here. But you can invest in a lot of other stuff before you get into this, or even build something yourself to do the same thing. Not worth the money. Don't buy it if you're just getting started. Like I said with the hollow chisel mortiser, we've used my floor model spindle sander way more than we ever used this thing and I've had that way shorter than I've had this. This sucker's been on a shelf for nine years. And last, but certainly not least, rounding out my top five is gonna be the DeWalt 12 inch bench top planer. I've put this old girl through her paces for a long, long time. And I don't actually necessarily dislike this tool. It's fine. It's a good entry level tool. It's got a lot of solid features to it. For instance, if you need new blades, they sell them at the box store so you can just pop in, grab them, get back to work. You don't have to order them to be sharpened. You don't have to send them out. That is nice about this tool. But some of the problems that I've had over the years have been one, doesn't have a ton of power. Don't care if you're in a 20 volt outlet, I constantly pop this little button here and blow it out. If you remember our pallet video where I only used this and our job site table saw to build a table, I was blowing this thing out left and right just running straight pine through it. Doesn't have a ton of uh, oomph or balls as I would typically say. It's also super, super heavy. 80 pounds, it's, they claim that you should have two people using it. The problem isn't that it's heavy, the problem is it's top heavy. A lot of that weight's in here, so as you're putting stuff through it, it tends to want to tip over, and I've had that issue for a long time. You have to fix it to something, even then, you're gonna, like I had constant problems with tipping the whole thing over, and it's not very wide either, so the base of it is not very stable. The dust collection on it is decent, the tooling on it is decent, but if you're not familiar, for a hundred bucks more, you can get into the DeWalt 13 inch bench top that I've used in a few of my friends shop and it is night and day difference. You're getting much closer to a professional feel on that tool than you are with this lunchbox. You're getting another inch to I think almost an inch and a half of width on your boards and capacity. I gotta pump those numbers up, those are rookie numbers. They make Shelix heads for it that you could put in which are carbide inserted heads. The dust collection is 10 times better than it is on this. It's built wider, so the center of gravity doesn't tend to tip. 
There's tons of YouTubers using it for a reason, and there's tons of pro shops on a smaller scale that run that tool because it's just so much better. Don't be cheap in this regard. The reason I don't recommend this for the beginner is because it's worth investing the extra $100. I've had more downtime just turn, waiting for this thing's breaker to turn back on than I have with any other tool combined in my shop. Uh, so save yourself the headache, spend an extra 100 bucks. Get the 13 inch, not the 12. So that is it. Those are the five tools I think beginners shouldn't be wasting their money on. If you've got a different opinion, I would love to hear it. Let's debate down below. Leave a comment. And then if you wanna see more from my shop, whole playlist right here.